One name pops up every time I make a video on an AI IDE, RuCode. It's an open source VS Code extension that can transform VS Code into an AI powerhouse to rival Cursor. What's cool is it's an open source project where you bring your own API keys, and it's very welcoming to community PRs, meaning it has some pretty unique features. After you subscribe, we can take a look. Let's get it installed through VS Code extensions. And as you can see, it adds this rocket down here and it says, hi, I'm Root. Now we do need to provide it with an API key and I'm gonna be using Open Router. If you haven't seen Open Router before, essentially it's a single API where we can use a load of different models like Claude, OpenAI, DeepSeek, Gemini, pretty much all of them. They even have an app showcase, which shows you that RuCode is the second most used client of Open Router, second to Klein, which RuCode is actually a fork of. Essentially, from what I can tell, is people are unhappy with how many PRs were being accepted into the Klein project, despite the fact that it was open source. So someone forked it, created RuCode with a more open approach. With my API key pasted in, let's go ahead and give this a go. Now there's a ton of cool settings in here that I want to come back to. Let's just see the stock out of the box experience. As you can see, it's a pretty standard interface for these AI IDEs. We can type in our prompt down here and we can use the at symbol to add in some context like our files, folders, problems, even git commits and URLs. We can then control the prompt mode though, and this is where it starts to get really powerful. It comes with three of them out of the box. It has code, which is the multi-purpose coding assistant. It has architect for high level system and design insights. And then it has ask, which is like your chat mode for research and Q and A and deeper exploration of your code base. But it's all about customizability. You can actually add in your own modes and modify the existing ones, changing everything from the system prompt to the files that it has access to. You're even able to prompt through to create a new mode for you. We'll set that up in a bit. For now, we'll go ahead and use the architect mode and I've given it a prompt to create me a Hacker News clone using Next.js and I've provided it with a screenshot of the Hacker News front page to add in a bit more context. Now we can actually go ahead and click this enhance prompt button as well. And that's gonna take it in and add in a lot more information so that for the next step, it has a lot more detail on what it needs to do. So you can see it's added in a lot more useful detail like implement features like the story listing with points, comments count, and it said use a responsive design with Tailwind. And we can go ahead and hit enter here. As you can see, we get a nice pop-up of the task at hand, and it actually will show you as you go, the amount of tokens you've used, the context window, and even the API cost. Now, you might be quite surprised when you use this with Claude, just how expensive Claude is, but it's great that we now have the option that we could choose something like Gemini or DeepSeek, which is way cheaper. You can see as it's going as well, it shows you it in this diff view over here. And because we started in the architect mode, it's actually gone ahead and created a project plan for us. Now it says it wants to create that new file, and we can go ahead and click save. Now, if we left it like this, you'd have to click save for every new file it creates. What's great is we can actually configure the auto approve here. So if I go into auto approve, I'll say I want it to automatically approve editing files, and then I'll tick this up here. Now, next time it needs to approve a file, it won't need to ask us. Now you can see that it's created the project plan for us. So now it wants to switch into the code mode to actually start writing the code. So we'll auto approve that. What's great as well, as you can see, is in that last API request, it tells you exactly the cost of that specific task. Next, it wants to go ahead and run the create next app command. So we'll hit run command. Again, you could set this up to approve everything and you'd pretty much have an automated AI agent here. Now, interestingly, there was an error with that command because the folder I was inside of just to test this was called root code with capitals. And apparently you can't create a project with that. But you can actually see that it's picked up that terminal error and it's running a new command. So we can do that. It's making a hacker news clone folder now within this one. And then it's running the command. If I go ahead and just spam through this configuration here, it should pick up when this command has finished. There we go, it can move on to its next step now, making another API request. As you can see, it's gonna start creating my code and that's all streaming in over here. Now I left it going for what seemed about two minutes there. As you can see, it's created all of the files that it thinks it needs to create our Hacker News clone. And it's now ready for me to go ahead and run this. It wants to run the command CD Hacker News clone and NPM run dip. So if I go ahead and hit run command here, I'm also gonna minimize this where you can actually see that the total cost I've used up so far is 25 cents. As I said, Claude is very expensive, but we'll change that later to Gemini. Now you can see that it had an error because it didn't need to CD into that folder. There was no reason it was already inside of it. So now it just wants to run npm run dev. It picked that error up nicely for us. And that command error too, because apparently it's still in the wrong directory. It somehow changed it. Let's go ahead and run this one and hopefully that one works. There we go. You're gonna see something really cool when this launches and that is its browser automation. 
You can see here, it says now that the development server is running, let's use the browser to check our Hacker News clone. And it says Rue wants to use the browser. Now we'll see, we could auto-proof this. If I just expand this a bit so we can see it clearer and zoom out a little bit as well as we're gonna need that in a bit, we can go ahead and hit approve here. Now what's gonna happen is it's gonna launch its own browser. And this way it can go ahead and pick up things like the console logs. It can see UI issues and it can go ahead and debug these all for you. So you can see in that first screenshot there, it's seen what the Hacker News website looks like. And then it's gonna make a few more actions based on the fact that it wants it to look better to match the original design of that screenshot I gave it. Like how cool is that? It used this browser up here to see that it doesn't look exactly like the screenshot I gave it. And then when I made a load of code modifications to get it closer and it wants to run the browser again to give it another check. So if I hit approve here, we should see the Hacker News site pop up here. And you can see it looks a little bit better with that Y having that square box around it. I think that was one of the changes it needed to make. And it's also made the header look a bit more. As you can see, it's gonna close the browser and make a few final adjustments. And there we go, task completed. It actually used the browser one more time there to check the results and then make a few more changes. And this is the final result and it's happy with that. So it says, go ahead and execute this command, open localhost 3000, and that will open it up in my browser. This is the result of that first run then. And I'd say it's done a pretty good job at recreating the Hacker News front page but it doesn't yet have the submit page. It didn't fill this out, it just added the link to it. So let's go ahead and ask it to create the submit page. So I'll click start new task here and you can see it's opening up a new window. And then I'll paste in, can you create the submit page now? And I'll click that enhance prompt button as well, just to add in a bit more information. Once that's done, I'll go ahead and hit enter. With that done, we now have a mock submit page as we don't have a backend yet, it can't actually submit anything. But what I wanted to show you was just how cool this browser action stuff gets. As you can see, it launched the browser, but then we can click through the steps that it took. So if I click next here, you can see it wanted to test the form validation. So it went ahead and just tried to submit an empty form and it saw correctly that the errors occurred. So it is working as expected. Then it tested a few more things like typing in an invalid URL. And then again, saw that the error message was popping up. So it's really cool how it can test that for you. It really does feel like an AI teammate. The only downside I can see so far isn't even Rue Code's fault, and that is that it costs quite a bit on Claude Sonic. You can see that submit page actually cost me 50 cent, but because we have all of the control and the power, I could have switched this to Gemini 2, and it would have cost me around 2 cents. Now, when it comes to things like inline prompting, I do believe Rue Code is a bit limited because it's a VS Code extension and not a fork, so you can't really get that prompt pop-up box that you might get in Cursor, but you can still go ahead and select some code, click on the quick actions light bulb, and you can get Rue Code to explain it, add it to the context, fix the logic and in the problems tab down here as well you can actually right click and also ask Rue code to fix it and as you saw earlier you can even do at and then problems and it will pick up these workspace problems so that's the out of the box experience that you get with Rue code but its power really is in its customizability so if i head back to the settings where we gave it our api key you can see we can choose the model down here as i mentioned claude is very expensive it's 15 dollars for a million input tokens and then three dollars for a million output tokens so let's go ahead and change this model you can actually type in free here and see some of the free models you have access to of course they might have some limits but super cool if you wanted it really cheap let's go ahead and use gemini as i said earlier as i believe this one is a lot cheaper i think gemini 2 flash 001 is the latest you can see the input price is 10 cents for a million input tokens and then 40 cents for a million output that's 37 times cheaper than claude now you can see that Gemini doesn't actually support computer use or prompt caching. Not really sure that prompt caching is going to matter based on how cheap Gemini is. There's a few more things that you can configure in these settings here. You can use a custom temperature for your models if you're into controlling that. You can set up the auto approve settings from here as well as from that prompt input box. You can change how that browser behavior works, what viewport size it shows up in and the screenshot quality. You can enable a sound effect for each thing that Rue code does. And then you can change some things like the rate limit, the terminal output limit, and just a load of other cool settings. But where it gets really powerful is with the prompts. If you click this book up here, you get to the prompt settings. And in here, we can modify the entire behavior of Rue code. You can see we can add in some custom instructions for all of the modes. So this is where you'd add in some general rules. But then we get to the modes, and this is where it's super powerful. You can see the three that it's provided us with already. So code, architect, and ask, as I explained earlier. And you can see they have a role definition. So code is a highly skilled software engineer, whereas architect is an experienced technical leader. Then you can choose your API configuration. This is actually really cool because you can set up a different API per mode. Say you had a documentation writer, you could go ahead and set that up to use the Gemini API, but then when you're in the code mode, make sure that it's using the Claude API as that one is a lot better for coding. Now, when you combine this with the fact that it can automatically switch modes, you have pretty much my dream feature of automatically selecting a model for you. 
Then you can go ahead and choose the tools that each mode has access to, whether it can read files, edit files, use MCP, use the browser, run commands, and then you can provide it with mode specific instructions. The code mode doesn't have any, but as you can see in Architect, it does have some in here. What's really powerful though, as I mentioned, you can create your own. So we click plus up here. In here, you can give your mode a name. You can choose where you want it saved to. So whether it's a project specific mode, or if you want the mode to be available in all of your projects, then you can set up that role definition, the available tools, and also the custom instructions that we just talked about. Now with the rise of AI, that all seems like too much work for me. So what's really cool is you can actually just go ahead and prompt through code to create a new mode for you. So I'll create a documentation writer mode and hit enter. And when that's done, you can see it's added in that new documentation writer mode, and it's done that in a room modes file. So this is going to be project specific. I probably could have asked it to create it in the global settings as well. You can see in here how it's defined in JSON. If I head back to the prompts as well, we can see our new mode here of documentation writer, and you can see it has a role definition of you are a technical writer and documentation specialist, and it even has some mode specific custom instructions as well. All of this generated by AI. Now, what's really cool though, is when it has these available tools, so it has edit files, you can see when you actually use the JSON settings, you can change the file regex. So this documentation writer can only change markdown files, and I could come in here and customize this for what I like. So you have complete control over how these modes work. The other great thing in the prompt settings is you can control the behavior of those support prompts that we saw earlier, like that enhance prompt button. You can see we can change the prompt that it actually uses and also the API again. So you could use a different model per each enhancement here. So if I click something like explain code, fix issues, you can see there's a different prompt for each one. And it has this nice syntax for if you want to include the user input and diagnostic text, just so many cool customizability features. On top of all of that, it even has MCP server support. If you haven't seen these before, essentially you can set these up to control basically anything from Docker, databases, literally anything that you want to, and you can even create your own servers. What's really cool with RuCode is it has MCP server creation mode. So if you say add a new tool to, and then you give it a description to create something, it will go ahead and try create that MCP server for you. That's RuCode. Let me know in the comments what you think. I was actually pleasantly surprised at how many features it had and just how customizable it was. I think this is perfect for those developers who love complete oversight of their tools and love to dig into the fine details. Make sure to subscribe and as always, see you in the next one.